I'm Joe McDonald, and I'm here in Puerto Rico at a private reserve and biological station. Now, what I'm going to do with this video is show you how I set up for this, the equipment involved, and then we'll finish with, hopefully, some really spectacular bat photographs. Behind me is the cave itself. It extends in uh, this limestone area for about 400 meters. It's called a hot cave because it's a uh, maternity cave for the bats. Now, one of my friends who's brought me here has been in there before, but the temperatures can be well over 100 degrees, and with the, uh, the bat guano, it can be rather toxic as far as the atmosphere goes as well. We have no interest in going inside. Instead, what we're going to do is photograph the bats as they're flying out of the cave. And to do that, we're going to use either a range IR or a saber. These are infrared tripping devices. And when a bat breaks the beam, the flashes will fire, which will be rigged to the saber. Behind me, you can see a vine. And on that vine, last evening, there was a Puerto Rican boa. It's an endangered species. In fact, the first species that was declared in endangered in Puerto Rico. These boas hang on the vines or hang on the cliff behind me, waiting for bats to go by. And as bats come, come close, they'll strike. Most of the time they miss. But with their teeth, on occasion, they snag a bat. And we were lucky enough to see the boas eat three bats last evening. Good luck for us as photographers, bad luck for the bats. Last night, we used this one. This is called the Range IR. And I would plug my flash cable into here, and when the bat breaks the beam, this would fire. It also has a rheostat to it that uh, controls the length of the beam. And last night, because we arrived late, I didn't control the beam too much, so it was out farther than I'd like it to be. Now I have it set that if I choose to use this one, I'll be okay. Now tonight, we're gonna to be using the uh, Sabre, which is kind of like the, uh, the big brother, the sophisticated big brother of the Range IR. When you turn it on, you just press this button here, and then aim it at a target area. A beam goes out and tells the Sabre that it should only fire when something in front of that target area breaks the beam. So the target area itself, whether that's a wall or a rock or my friend who I might just aim it at so I can get a distance, that won't trip it. Anything closer to that will. So we're gonna have this planned that we have about a, a four foot gap between the beam and the end of the beam where our bats have to fly in this area here. And that will allow us to focus in to a little bit tighter area. Now, doing that, we're going to miss a lot of bats. Last night, we had the range IR beam extending out about 10 feet. But we were only covering about a three or four foot area. So bats would break the beam, but we weren't recording it. So tonight, with using the Sabre, and we could have done the same with the range IR, we'll have a smaller area that's going to be covered, and we'll, our lens will be inside that. Now, the only thing that's going to do differently is bats that are flying outside of the beam, outside of this range, if you will, won't trigger the system. So it may appear that we're not getting as much activity. But what it will allow us to do is use longer shutter speeds. So we may be using 8 seconds or 15 second exposures, keeping the shutter open so that if a bat does break the beam, we'll catch it. And again, the, uh, I didn't point this out earlier. After you turn it on, there's a set button. So you press this set button here, and that determines the distance, and anything shorter than that distance is what trips the camera. Or in this case, we'll be tripping the flash. How this works for the shooting is we have a flash uh, transmitter, if you will, attached to the saber. When a bat breaks the saber's beam, it sends an instantaneous signal through the transmitter to four flashes that I have around the area to cover all the light. Now I'm going to be using anywhere between a two second and a 15 second exposure, depending upon how much activity there is. If there is a lot of activity and you have a 15 second exposure, 
A bat could break the beam, flash, 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 all in eight seconds or 15 seconds. And you could have overlap or you could have uh, so much light that's hitting the cave behind it that it would overexpose. But if there's only a, a minimal activity at any time, then a long exposure works because you're not eating up a lot of frames. And then when something breaks a beam, bam, the flash fires. So here's the last two pieces I have to show you. I have a Fotex transmitter and I slipped it onto a hot shoe that is attached to a cable with an RCA plug at the end of which, and I'll plug that into my saber. When a bat breaks the beam, breaks the beam, the transmitter will pick that signal up instantaneously, and then the transmitter will transmit that signal to a Fotex receiver. Now I have tape on each one of these so I, I know when I'm recharging which ones I've done. This receiver goes into my hot shoe, tighten it down, which triggers the flash. End of story, we have the shot. Now there's one final point. The flashes themselves have to be on manual mode. If you use TTL with that big black background, the flashes are quite likely to uh, give you a longer flash duration than you need and probably overexpose the bats as well. What I'm going to be doing is dialing my flashes down with the power ratio to between 1 16th and 1 32nd power. Now at 1 32nd power it's just a little beep of, of light, just a blip, but that acts like a shutter speed and will freeze the action of the bats. And almost all of your better flashes have a power ratio in the back. You can't do it on full power because the flash duration itself is too long. It really has to be a very short duration, just as it would be if you were using like a ambient light shutter speed. And that's it. You may know the theory involved, but there's, there's actually a lot of hard work involved with it as well. So I have my light stand attached to a tree, and then I'm just going to extend the beam out on my light stand, lock it in place, move my next out, and there we go. Now it's ready. The last thing I have to do in this situation is come down and with a stick, break the beam and make sure everything's firing. Now that I have the beam in place, what I'm gonna do is use this, this uh, limb as a tripper to see if everything is going correctly. So there's the saber and there's a little red light that will light up when the bat breaks the beam. As soon as I get to here or here is where we'll have our camera focus for getting the bat. So I have everything in place now. I have two light stands here that will have flashes. They will cover that area where I talked about with the, the uh, saber coating, where breaking the beam. And then I have two flashes on this side too. So it'll end up, it'll be kind of like two key lights, both on either side. And now in about four hours, we'll be photographing the bats. Well, the trip is over and I'm back in Pennsylvania at my studio in Hoot Hollow where I'm looking at the bat photographs that I've processed. On the trip, we shot about 2,000 images. Some of those were blank, and some of the times the flashes fired, but the bats were out of the frame. Nonetheless, we probably ended up with about 300 images, and culling those down to the top 50, I think we did pretty darn well. We ended up with four different species at least, in a variety of poses. So all in all, it was an extremely successful shoot. Well, here I am at Hoot Hollow, at the Hoot Hollow Institute of Nature Photography, where each summer I teach an advanced course. The shooting opportunity here is really incredible to not only learn, but execute what you're learning and taking great shots at the same time. And let me show you.
I'm standing at what we call our outdoor studio set, where our students have an opportunity to photograph raccoons at night right at water level and apply some of the flash techniques that we talked about. During the day, we have a chance to photograph jumping chipmunks and gray squirrels hopping across these rocks, and also perhaps some birds coming into mealworms that we put for a feeder. We have a lot of other neat props as well. Let me show you. This one's a new one, and it has a big hole in it here, a natural cavity where, and I just got this prop, we may get squirrels popping out, or perhaps at night raccoons. It'll be a pretty neat set, and um, I'm anticipating some great photographs here. And then over this way, I'm standing at one of my new props for this summer's course. This log will be the perfect ambush site or the location to place a range IR or a saber. Well, I'm standing at really one of my favorite camera trap locations. We've had bobcat, gray fox, red fox, fox squirrel, gray squirrel, chipmunk, groundhog, skunk, opossum, even a great horned owl. So we have some really great opportunities for this particular location. We also have an ebook that covers everything. It's called High Speed Flash and Camera Triggering Devices. You can get it from a direct link from our website. But if you have a chance, come to Hoot Hollow. Learn these techniques, hands on experiences. You'll have a great amount of fun. You'll come away with some super photographs. And most importantly, you will learn flash and triggering devices. So we'll see you at Hoot Hollow, hopefully.